This is Israel, and then there is Christ, and then there is the church. So, I want us to revisit something, ne? and I want us to look at how we must keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It means there is leaven which must be put away. I speak what God lays in my heart. It means there is leaven. So when you look at the feast of unleavened bread, Israel literally, literally, literally kept the feast. For seven days, they kept the feast. If you look at Passover, Passover was a three feasts in one. It was just the feast of Passover. The Bible says on the 14th day of the first month, it shall be the feast of Passover. It shall be an holy convocation. When you read your Bible, it was in the month Abib. This shall be the beginning of months for you. Israel had two calendars, a sacred calendar and a civil calendar. A civil calendar is the normal calendar we all have, 12 months, 365 days based on the sun. But there was another calendar, a sacred calendar a spiritual calendar, the one the priests were using. And this one they were using to keep all of their feasts. The Bible says something interesting. This shall be the beginning of months for you. The year has already begun, but when Passover happens, this is the beginning. So what is the principle? Your life has already begun, but Passover happens. This is the beginning for you. You are now a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, everything has become new. So, in Israel, there was a literal Passover. There was a literal Pentecost. There was a literal Feast of Unleavened Bread. But in Christ, the feast is actual. Ignore this for now, ne? In Christ, it was personal. So, in Israel, they went through the feast literally. It was a literal feast they had to keep. In Christ, the feast is personal. The person is the feast. It happens in Christ. It is personal. Then it filters through the cross. The church also goes through this feast. But with us, it is not literal. With us, it's not even personal. With us, it is spiritual. Yeah, it doesn't spit. It doesn't fit. (laughs) So Israel went to the feast literally. Christ was the feast personally. The church experiences the feast spiritually our focus is unleavened bread so spiritually we need to go through unleavened bread in exodus in israel the feast were happening happening typically christ was the type but in christ they are happening anti typically Because every type has got an anti-type. You understand? Abraham is a type. Jacob is a type. Joseph is a type. Christ is the anti-type to all of those types. The rock is a symbol, but Christ is the substance. So, in Israel it was anti-typical. In Israel, it was typical. In Christ, it was anti-typical. But in the church, it is practical. So, we practically... Yeah, yeah, man, you know what I'm saying. In Christ, we practically go through the feast. So, this speaks about practice. 
Now we're going to look into the practices of the church. Practically. Practically. Exodus 12, verse 15. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. So now notice, every must put away all leaven. All of it must be put away. Now we see what God did in Israel. We are seeing God at work in Israel. Here we are seeing God at work in Christ. Yo! And then here we are seeing God at work in the church. So, there was what God was doing in Israel. We see what God was doing in Christ. We see what God is doing in the church. Are you still with me? So all living must be put away. Verse 16. And in the first day there shall be an holy convocation. And in the seventh day there shall be an holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. Pause, ne? Every that day shall be a holy convocation. No manner of servile work is to be done. No manner of servile work is to be done. It must be a Sabbath day. It must be a Sabbath day. So, how do we keep and live in bread. We need to enter into his rest. We need to enter into the Lord's rest. The only way we enter into his rest, Hebrews tells us, is for everyone who enters into his rest, first ceases from his own works. So we need to cease from self-righteousness. We need to cease from our own works and tap into his works. When you tap into his works, your perspective changes. Your perspective changes that I am not saved by good works. And your perspective changes, I have been saved for good works. So my good works do not guarantee my salvation. My good works is an active outworking of my salvation. So my good works are happening because I am saved. My good works do not save me but they happen because I am saved. So we cease from our own works. So this speaks about not trying to attain something. You're not doing this so that you can be holy. You are doing this because you are holy. You're not trying to be holy. You are holy. Because sanctification is an ongoing work. He has sanctified us. He is sanctifying us and he will sanctify us. It's an ongoing work. It is a continued work. But here is the thing. Israel simply observed. Observed. Yeah. Can you see what I wrote here? Israel observed the feast. So, let me write it like this, observation. The observation, yeah, the feast. In Christ, we find their interpretation. Interpretation. So, in Christ, these things are interpreted. But in the church, these things are applied. We have the application now. And then here's the end. In Christ, we are seeing the application. How does this work? There was a literal Passover which happened. In Christ, personally, he is the Passover, the cross. And then 
how can I explain it? We just read that in the 14th, on the 14th day of the first month. So on the 14th day of the first month, Passover must happen. When you read that instruction carefully, the Bible says, you shall take a lamb, a lamb which is 10 days old. So the lamb must be 10 days. Number two, you, m- you must put the lamb aside for four days. And then on the, on the 14th day, the lamb must be slaughtered. So we see who, before anything even happened, the lamb was set aside. So 10 is the number of law and order. The Bible teaches us that from Abraham, from Adam until Christ, it is 4,000 years. So from Adam to Jesus is four days. The Bible says a day with the Lord is like a thousand years and a thousand years like one day. The Bible says the revelation they did, every the lamb which was slain from the foundation of the world. No wonder when Adam sinned, God already had lamb skin to clothe them in. God already had animal skin to clothe them in. Why? Because the lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. So before anything was formed, God had already made provision for the fall of man. So when man enters into sin, then there is now the outworking of redemption. But now Christ will ultimately come in the fullness of time. So our sin did not catch God by surprise. Nothing catches God by surprise. Remember, he is omniscient. So as all-knowing as he is, he had made provision for the sin of men. That's why the Bible says he is the lamb which has slain from the foundation of the world. And when he's giving Moses this instruction, he is speaking typically of Christ who is to come. Ari Moses, I need a lamb of 10 days old because Jesus is the only one who can keep all the 10 laws. He is the only one. I need a lamb of 10 days old old and so because when God was creating 10 times in Genesis 1 God said let there be let there be let there be so now the son he is the word of God he has become all that God has intended for man to be and so now you take a lamb of 10 days old and put it aside for four days so now the father took the firstborn of all creation and put him aside for four days from Adam to Jesus it is 4,000 years a day with the Lord is a thousand years. So the father put his side, his son aside for 4,000 years. And then on the 14th day, we are now ready for this thing to be slaughtered, for this lamb to be slaughtered. And the Bible says like a lamb be silent before its shearers. So Christ opened not his mouth. He was just like a lamb. He did not open his mouth in his own defense. He, the only time Christ spoke, not a lamb heart, when they said we look for Jesus of Nazareth and I am he, the soldiers fall down. So I better keep quiet because if, if I talk any further, we shall put the lamb aside for four days and on the 14th day you shall slaughter the lamb so Christ is that lamb who was slaughtered on the 14th day the father has kept him aside that's what the Bible says when the fullness of time was come that's why Christ could not come in the days of Abel. That's why he could not come in the days of David. That's why he could not come in the days of anyone else. He had to come in the fullness of time. The Bible says in the book of Galatians, when the fullness of time was come, God sent his son made of the woman, made under the law. In the fullness of time, we were under a schoolmaster until the time was right. Until the time was right. So now, in Christ, in Israel, they observed a literal Passover. In Christ, we have the interpretation of Passover. But in the church, we have the application of Passover. Every time there's an altar call, we'd like to receive Jesus. Passover is happening. We are now priests applying the feast of Passover. So now someone is going through Passover. And so now Passover is not just now a a season, but Passover is happening all the time. 
Whenever a person believes on the Lord Jesus, Passover is happening. So there is an application. So now these feasts are now applied in the church. Now we look at the feast of unleavened bread. And with the feast of unleavened bread, we are seeing sanctification. So with the feast of unleavened bread, for seven days, we must keep this feast. So we are keeping this feast for seven days because we, we need God to sanctify us perfectly. You understand? So there are some who are in the feast of unleavened bread by the seven days. Some have kept it for three days and they think are no reshap. But there are still idols in your heart. There are still idols. There are still things you must let go. You must partake of the feast for seven days. Or at least not getting a little boyfriend, but there's still a lot of issues. You understand? Sharp, oh, you know, more than zero. You know, more than three. But still, also feel perfection. We must keep it for seven days. So we're on a journey. Some on day five. Why won't I also tell me the journey? Take us alone. You will keep it for seven days. And let me tell you something. Listen, Jaha, guys. Don't rush things. Don't rush to marry. Don't rush. Enjoy. Take your time. Matatara them. Take your time. I know you want the lessons for sex, ne? but take your time. Take your time. You know what Satan does? He gets married people to stop having sex and for unmarried people to start having sex. That's how Satan operates. The married ones are not doing it. Baba Nyetzing, Baba Peace. Baba Sanyala. Suitable help. I'm telling you. I am telling you. With everything they are. You're even overlooking the fact. Or brother busy a savannah. Or I want to marry a savannah. Can't even think. Ah, we're overlook. Oh no, you know, I had him praying in tongues. Listen, are you trying to convince us or yourself? Who are you trying to convince us or yourself? People rush things. They rush. Because you're on a Greek left. Shem, your ambitions are low. Your ambitions are very low. Low, 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 low. Low. We need to keep the feast seven days. Seven days. We need God to perfectly sanctify us. The Holy Spirit needs to have His complete and perfect work in us. Because I know that the self-righteous ones, because they're on day two of unleavened bread, who are now went past day one. Look at them. But if you check your internet search history, Kira when you go on incognito mode. Kira Luna, who wipes search history? Karaluna, who browse Gadi VPN. Nishonim. There is a work God is doing. He wants to put away all living, verse 19. Here, all living must be put away from you. All living must be put away. All living must be put away. Verse 19. Seven days shall there be no living found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is living, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Listen, no one is exempt. Even if it's they're just passing by. They are going to Damascus, Bafid. If you got living, 
you are deported from Israel. Whether you are a Jew or not, if you are going to pass during the Feast of Unleavened Bread and you've got some leaven on you, you are in trouble. You must comply with the laws of the land. When Pentecost happened, Peter came as you are. You know what Peter says? You know what Peter says? Peter Ari, God, by his foreknowledge and his predetermined counsel, delivered up his son, whom you, with your wicked hands, crucified and slew him. God has raised him from the dead. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name. Repent ye therefore and be baptized and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says when Peter spoke, they were pricked in their hearts. 5,000 get saved. Come as you are is a nice statement, Mary. It is not the word. It's a nice statement. It is not the word. What will save you? It is the word. Preach the word. Go to the call. Come as you are. Quote the verse. No, serious, quote the verse. That can be a quote the verse. The verse of an quote is going to do much more than come as you are. Because when you come as you are, you're going to get a false conversion. They're going to come as they are thinking, okay, God, repeat, I can come with it. Tomorrow, because you told them come as you are. Well, we all come as sinners. But what are we coming to do? To repent. As you are, come and repent. If it late, hey. If it late, finish the statement. Half truth is worse than a lie. Half truth is worse than a lie. Against a lie says, I'm a lie. Half truth is masquerading as the truth. The Bible says Ephraim is a half big cake, not a tent. He Ephraim half big cake. Ke ke mara ya buto. Ngilo ja ke ke se buti. Ka mo tla se e fihile go dimo e sale. Ephraim is a half big cake, not a tent. These are people that can prophesy. Mark the phone and like nobody's business. Half baked cake, not ten. They never miss a Sunday service. But they also never miss 50% night at the club on Thursday. Go back consistent. Say, I was missing the crack miss. But a happy hour, give on. They always go to clubs, but Jesus turn water to wine. They never go to funerals, but Jesus raised the dead. That's the only verse they practice. Can I all fail? So, there are some principles on how to keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. We have to keep it in a particular way. Leaven. We all know what leaven is. Yeast. Yeast works secretly. Yeast works mysteriously. Yeast works slowly. It permeates, it fills the hole. Once yeast is done, 
the entire door will look like the yeast. But you can see yeast starting to work. You can see it. You only see it when it is done. Get yeast. Get the subtle power of influence. Subtle. Satan doesn't come and release the abominations. Satan comes and twists one scripture and then twists another scripture and twists another scripture. Before you know it, you are gone. A little living. Barcelona will not fornicate, but let's fornicate my sister. But let's Netflix and chill. When they're Netflixing, but how? Let's hug. Let me embrace you. That's what they're doing. They're not saying we're going to fornicate right now. They're hugging each other. We shouldn't be doing this, wait. Yeah, we shouldn't. As they're getting closer, we shouldn't be doing this. A little living. Now, where in the Bible does it say we can kiss? There's Satan with the reverse. Let me tell you, Satan with the reverse. Satan went to the word with the word. Let me tell you, Satan with the verse. Satan with the verse. Satan, why is he He knows what God said to Eve and Adam. I wonder how he knows, I don't know, but he knows. And he comes to test what you know. So what is Satan? You can kiss. In fact, when do we see a wedding in the Bible? Adam and Eve, when was their wedding day? <laughs> In eternity, we're already married, you and I. <laughs> Do you see a pastor in Genesis marrying Adam? And about sister Wabari Aria. Old cop, old cop, old cop. How? Who married Adam and Eve? Who married them? Wait, you've got a point, Wait, You've got a point. Then one thing leads to another. Satan doesn't just come. A little living. An idea, ah, man, we can kiss. The same lips you prophesy with. Those ones. Those lips are prophesying with. Limbuka pila fella. Pila fella. Pila fella. Unleavened bread. The bread is full of yeast. Full of yeast. Especially Baba the Navy, Baba Quick is the quicker in sin. Or what are so? Highly quick in the prophet, because the prophetic is romantic. Highly quick as a prophet, they just know. This is the old quick. I'm telling you. It's a sick the Lord upon our one of Oyen. I wanna win. That's an avant shaking, avant shake. But I'm not even moved to ordain anyone. I don't look at gifts to ordain. Nah, nah. Do you know how many I could have ordained in that? Cyril Peterson. Do you know how many I have trained? Do you know how many I have taught? But in Abasama Mina, they went through my school today. They can stand on any platform. Marek's ordained. 
Because fruit and the nigga back, a guy born. Fruit and the I was looking for, a guy born. When you ordain, you partake of their sin. When you ordain, you partake of their sin. Now I've got no interest in having sons all over for him. They're gonna find someone better tomorrow. You be another father. What's one? What glory is bad in there? Guys, bari recycle. We are nothing. We are being recycled like that. Paul, we are nothing. We are nothing. Can you will support group of Ruti Bilan? They recycle us like we are nothing. Like we are nothing. There is a lot of living, and all living must be put away. All living must be put, put away. What that has ever wrought, get the living. What that has the living. And all of it must be put away. So living works secretly. It works slowly. But we can see its results. You know how living works? Ne? It causes fermentation. When fermentation happens, there is a gas which is released, carbon dioxide. Fermentation is almost like photosynthesis. So there are three things involved. Cellular respiration, photosynthesis, and fermentation. People and animals, cellular respiration. We take in oxygen, we release carbon dioxide and water vapor. You also need water to breathe, by the way. That's our hema. There will always be water vapor. When it's hot, you can see it. When it's cold, you can see it. Get cellular respiration. We have plants and algae. Photosynthesis. They take carbon dioxide and produce oxygen. In fact, algae produces more oxygen than trees. You want more oxygen, have more algae. Because algae produces more oxygen than trees. Number three. There is fermentation. There are other organisms ne, whose process of getting energy give fermentation. Things like yeast and defang. And when they ferment, they produce the gas. And then these gases causes the thing to rise. That's why when you put dough, you pour in leaven a little bit. Just allow it to influence. Just allow it to do its thing. Once it is done, you will see the whole thing raised. A little living, Corinthians, a little living, living the whole lamb. James 1 earring. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away by his own lust. And when lust has fully matured, gives birth to sin. And when sin is done, death. So last thing eh, is going to lead you to sin. You don't just sin. What am I going to last? Listen, eh? put that thing in front of me. Whether I'm in a 40-day fast, I don't eat that thing. I don't eat the thing. But put why you give steak more blood. I can look at the chops. I will look at the Japanese beef. I think sushi. Why you? Do come with somebody massage. I understand it. That cow. 
child has a better life than you. Better life than you. What happens with this fermentation? A little leaven leavens the whole lamb. Every man is tempted when he's drawn away by his own lust. I don't eat in gomas. I can never be tempted to eat in gomas. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away by his own lust. There is no such thing as an accidental sin. There is something you like about it. What is a lust? A lust is an appetite. An appetite that overmasters you. Lust is not only sexual. There are four key appetites God has given us. Four appetites. These appetites are natural. There's an appetite for food. It tells you, eat. Get appetite. When something is wrong with the appetites, we know that something is wrong with you. How's not appetite all of a sudden? It's a signal how something is wrong. So, get appetite. But now when the appetite begins to overmaster you, Copa lesson the really nyana man with the powerful with otome mo jego yeah so can take a preach. Because you're somebody like a di pre ludo fell and I get preach I di thing, but di relabo sees. What am I gonna do with that video? Because you're not delete down to me delete delete. I want mine. So, we have appetites, and these appetites are natural. There's also a sexual appetite, it's natural. It's natural to have a sexual appetite. Thus, Nayona, we begin to worry. You need to have a sexual appetite, and it's, it's natural. But when the appetite begins to overmaster you, when you have no mastery over your appetite, but the appetite has got mastery over you, we have a problem. We now have a problem. There is an appetite for fellowship and recreation. No man can be alone. You're going to go mad, literally. We need recreation and entertainment. It's an appetite we have. There is also an appetite for God. That's why everywhere in the world, there is something they believe in. Even unbelievers believe in something. Even though they don't call it belief. They will tell you it must be testable, it must be provable, it must be repeatable in a lab before it can be a hypothesis and then it must be tested and then we can believe in the scientific method. Oh, you are clever, ne? Scientific method. Okay, sharp. Now tell me, does the scientific method work in every instance? Prove to me scientifically. Ne? Hori. Julius Caesar existed. Scientifically. Observation, testing, repetition. Okohan. Okohan. There's historical evidence. Okay, but historical evidence is sharp for Shakespeare. Historical evidence is sharp for Caesar. Historical evidence is sharp for everything except Jesus. When it comes to Jesus, historical evidence is very big. Who says Plato existed? Why are we studying Plato? How do you know Plato existed? In fact, the writings of Plato are nothing compared to the Bible. Because they have not went through the stringent test that the no document, no historical document has ever went through the stringent test of scripture. To a, to a point that by some of our own material, we disregard it. Uh, uh, this one does not pass the test. There are some material from Bible times which are rejected. Not because they contain lies, but they don't pass the test. Norwaka Kano Nisiti. 
and her bulaga canonicity ne akutuse not everything uncanonized is untrue not everything uncanonized is not true. However, everything which is canonized has got this one important thing, proof of inspiration. There are people who were there in the times of Jesus who also wrote about those times. They can write true things about what happened, but what they wrote was not inspired. And because it is not inspired, it cannot be canon. So not everything which did not make its way into the canon is a lie. Because what will come with a book, a look, it is accurate, okay, sharp, but does it carry the seal of divine inspiration? Canonicity. Does it measure up No historical document has ever went through such a stringent test. Before we go anywhere, we've got what we call the textus receptus. Source documents. We don't just suck this thing in some thin air. Get the textus receptus. Anyone can even access it. The same thing they translated, you can have access to it today. On a conspiracy. I don't know about modern Greek or ancient Greek. People in Greece cannot speak ancient Greek. That's why you need theologians. And that's why you must be careful of the Persian translation. Because the Persian translation preaches nice. Oh, Persian translation But there's a problem. It is not a scholarly work. It's a revelational work. That thing should have been a commentary, not a Bible translation. Because that guy is preaching. I, I'm not hitting the guy, ne? but he's preaching. And when I'm reading the word, you don't want to read it through someone else's lens. You want an academic work. Scholars, theolo- the theology you hate, those theologians. Your favorite prophet can't translate. Not even me. I can translate. We need scholars. God is able to preserve his word, to even use academic people in the process of inspiration. The, the, the scriptures are not only inspired, but they are preserved. God is able to make sure that the word is preserved, even though we don't have the original manuscripts, but we've got text receptors. God has preserved his word because it's not about the handwriting, it's about what's written. It's about what's written. We're going to put a scientific method. But scientific method does not work on everything and anything. Not everything can be put into a test tube and tested. Are you in love? Let's put it in the test tube. Let's test. Let's see if we can replicate. I don't even know how I got there. No idea. Mark, if it's here. Nekile guy. Nekile guy, come on. Who's listening? Eh? No, 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 man, or somewhere else. Oh, okay, appetite, okay. Yes, I don't know how I got there. Okay, let's just take from appetite, it's fine. So the appetite we all have, there's also an appetite for God here before. That's why everywhere in the world, there is something every man believes in. Listen to the scientists when now, they don't believe in anything. They believe in something. I think Nikhil Samuim. They believe in something. They will tell you about a multiverse. That is the theory of the multiverse. Oh, really? Let me help you appreciate what a big problem this is. Akutus. There's what you call the observable universe. How much of it we can see? 
We don't know where it begins. We don't know where it ends. When I already telling us where there are infinitely many other universes and we will never be able to see this one. There's no way theoretically, physically, mathematically, whatever, you can justify that. And don't tell me mathematically you can prove it because your maths has not went through all the tests. I will show you. Since we have not seen the entire universe, there are equations which cannot explain things we have not seen. Equations explain what we see. There are other aspects of this universe that creation, our, our maths cannot explain. So we cannot therefore, saying the maths we do know, explains everything. And then to say that there are multiple universes, that there's another version of you in another universe. La la la. about life in another planet. And how about life in another planet? We've seen signals of life. We read an article the other day. So uh, there is the wavelength of light and then they're looking at the reflection. So the James Webb telescope has now passed to Jupiter. It's at its peak. now there is a planet and we think and we suspect or there can be life on that planet because of the, the wavelengths which are not reflecting back. That means they are absorbed. So it's possible or there can be methane in that atmosphere because methane is produced by living organisms and stuff like that. You know what? What is my problem? Let me say I'm not a Christian. I'm also a scientist. Ne, do you know what is the problem with those theories? You are assuming your life in the entire world is carbon-based. You are assuming your life in the entire universe is carbon-based. Because life on Earth is carbon-based. What if I told you right underneath carbon there is silicon, which has the same properties as carbon, but it's one group, one period below. Why don't we have silicon-based life forms? If I was looking for such things, I'd stop being narrow-minded, getting a carbon-based life form. What about silicon-based life forms? I can get the alien. Why must it be like life here? The hypocrite, they will tell you, Hori, that thing in your womb, as a mood, it's a fetus, it's a cell. They'll tell us mood, it's a cell, it's not life. Let me tell you today, free of charge. If they go to Mars today and they find a fossil of a cell, they're gonna say there was life in Mars. When they see a cell in Mars, it is life. When there is a cell in your belly, it is not life. And you call it science. And you call it science. When there is a cell, a cell fell, but no, it's not a human being, I say life. Oh, okay, I say life. Isn't it? But if you find a cell somewhere, we found life on Mars. Just a cell. I'm telling you, if they just see a trace where there was once a cell, something microbial, like a life. But when it's inside of you, a living thing, I say life. That's how propaganda works. Get a little live in your yeah, education. Live in here, live in there, live in there. Before you know it, you don't believe the Bible. They don't say don't believe the Bible. They just contradict it in every way. Live in, live in, live in, live in, live in. But a little of it leaves the whole lump. So there are appetites. And the appetites we have are determined by what you consume. James 4. Look at James 1, not go James 4. Go James 4, and you know you not that the spirit who dwells in us lasteth and in us unto envy. So the spirit who dwells in us longs, yearns, and lasts after us. Okay, guys, I will last the ale, but I won't do it because I already went somewhere else. But I want you to know that the things you desire, Proverbs 5, the soul, Proverbs 25, yeah, the soul that is full will loathe the honeycomb. Honey is something sweet. Honey is something everyone desires. But how could the head in body case, you will loathe the honeycomb? Something so precious, but because of could, you will loathe it. That's why my sister, once he has smashed, he doesn't care. 
Let me tell you, the budget for marketing and the budget for operations, I did one. The budget to take you to bed and the budget, the relationship, I did one. Marketing budget and operational budget, I did one. No, he's got money. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh. Ah, Radidi Malan. Okay. You love him. Oh, okay. Lenyazi, Milan Kisa, he's letting you see it. Oh, okay. Shop. Do you? Do you? You don't want to come to counseling sessions? Okay. Okay. Do you, boo? Listen, less stress for me. Less stress for me. Do you, boo? Do you? I don't even know how I got there. <laughs> my, my point is this. The soul that is full will loathe the honeycomb. So I, what is the principle? Your appetite is determined by what you feed on. What you feed on determines your appetite. If you are feeding on some stuff, you've got an appetite for them. When you are feeding on other stuff, you've got an appetite for them. You've got an appetite for umkruvu. Ne, because of what you are feeding on. You've got an appetite to attend the service somewhere because of what you are feeding on. You are jealous. Oh, why does such a person have so much fire for God? But I don't. I'll tell you why. What you are feeding on. What you feed on determines your appetite. It determines your appetite. So now, a man is tempted when he's drawn away by his own lust. Listen, there can be two of you, you both like the same girl. One of you is caught in a room with that girl. Nothing happens. The same brother, another brother, in, in the same room with the same girl. An issue happens. Same people, same desire different habits. Oh no, what are they supposed to do? A holy person wouldn't even be in that room in the first place. Today, on the pulpit, they teach you how to sin the right way. They tell you how to sin responsibly. Okay, I'm cold, I'm cold. They teach how to sin responsibly. Sin the right way. Be responsible, come on. Sin responsibly. Let your side chick respect your wife. I'm telling you, pastors have got more girlfriends than gangsters. Baruti Baba Seta. Alan Guka. The gangster that they've got nothing on Barut. Baba Seta. Kaya of Faves, Baba Seta. Baba Seta. You can play your closing song. There is living. With Kinya Batanaram theology, Marakon. Or how do we keep the feast? There are many living influences. Many living influences. Things working silently, slowly, secretly. And your heart is slowly drifting away from the things of God. And slowly drifting into the world. Let me tell you something. God will not speak to you about someone's husband. Pela la half alone. La half. I won't, I won't lie, la half. Let me deliver you. God won't speak to you about someone's husband. 
No, they're separating. If the attraction between the two of you started when something was going on there, just no one would you there. If you meet him five years after the divorce, and you meet, okay, maybe na lumu dim, ne? But if your bodies were talking to each other, asanyet la half. There is a divorce waiting to happen. There's another one. Ask me. There is another divorce waiting to happen. You dumped this one so you can beg this one. Right now, asimudim. Get testosterone. Salt is speaking. Kill it, why? I'm telling you. God won't talk to you about someone's wife. Mudimu, my God. Talking to you about someone's wife. Listen, just say I have a crush and I like this person. Be honest, though I like them, that's it. And we slap that attraction out of you. <laughs> someone's wife. Someone's wife. No, but they are separating. Are you mad? Are you mad? These are things brethren are doing in the church. Listen, ne? there is life after divorce. Ne? And when my conscience allows me, I can marry you. When my conscience allows me, I can marry you. Pardon me. There is a question now I will take you through. There is an interview I will take you through. And there is also my Noah. Ne, there is my Noah. The Bible in the book of Jewel, Ibiza the Naos, the inner sanctuary, where the Holy Spirit dwells. So I've got my Naos as well, my inner sanctuary. I get a counseling session. Sometimes I don't even have an agenda. I just, I'm just waiting for my Noah. So, if you are divorced, there is life after divorce. We go through some sessions. And then, if, there is, if you remember Samim, Bishop, I'll participate in the blessing ceremony. If not, guess what? I've got the right to say no. I've got the right to say no. And I, I say judgment as saying, I've got the right to say no. This is a heavy subject in the Bible, Ibilan. So now I won't do things for cloud. Tomorrow I must answer. No, it's a bila bila mo. I can't even learn to say that. Bila bila no it's a mo. Kilo ringin. But I want you to know that there is life after that. There's restoration after that. So in the example I was talking about, I am not saying that someone who has divorced has got no right to move on. I'm saying there are a certain set of prerequisites which have to be in place, which is not a discussion for today. So don't live here being condemned. Or for that person watching online, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> like, subscribe. Or comment, Debilan. Share. But let me tell you, you are looking for more than a good time. Listen, you're not just looking for a good wife. You are looking for more than a good time. Your own child won't listen to you. Ah, have you seen my father? Have you seen my father? Don't listen. Have you seen my dad? I'm Have you seen my dad? Have you seen my dad? I'm Merekel. South Armour. 
Saul's armor. Listen, there is a cleansing God is doing there. God is putting away all living. Ne, I'm telling you, there is grace to leave things behind. Ne, there is an anointing to leave things behind. Can you please move this? Please, you can move it. Okay. There is grace to leave things behind. God reveals in order to redeem. I'm not speaking like this to shame you. Okay, you should be ashamed a little. Mara, the purpose... The purpose is not to shame you. The purpose is to lead you through repentance and redemption. Guys, I'm going to be ashamed a little. Mjolo, ogun sinye ta krek. Kere mjolo, ogun sinye ta krek. Le kalarof. Le kalarof. Handle yourself, ne? Ne, in a way that if the future, guys, I'm an example, I'm a casting, I'm a casting anyone. Or when the future Mr. Chair comes, Mr. Chair won't feel uncomfortable with the brothers Baramo Kreke. I learned how about the future. You flood with everything and anything. When the one comes, Ogo Mona Sanya Ogo Namu, and Ogo Samu blame me. Which one is the thing when the guy is alone to design a mara? How many of you all are there is something in you which says, you know what? This person is playing in my territory. Tomorrow, you're going to want to bring the one. Come. After the lady is there, I can't stay there. I love your parents, but what a word, what a word. How will I branch? I'm there, but in this one, I get in. Because of the inappropriate behavior, yeah, how? You're not thinking about the future. You can't flirt with anything. Every new sister. Every new sister. Welcome to Oracles. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Go membership class. Go membership class. Go look at a blacklist. Give your sisters. Avoid, 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 avoid. Avoid. I want to one, two, three, avoid. I'm telling you, there are some brothers, I don't know why you're so much fussing them. I think you're so much fussing. Okay, put some hands on my own. Who are you hunting the natural instead of the spirit? You're hunting the natural. Ah, come on. This is the house of the Lord. You don't want your future missus when she comes. She can't stay here because of how you were treating yourself. Because you're going to make her uncomfortable. You're going to make sisters around uncomfortable. Now that's why I can say this. I don't say, does anyone have any? I can't hear it too. I can't hear it. 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 Le galarov. Le galarov. It's okay to be interested. But there's something wrong when you're interested in everyone. Oh, no. I wrote an oath that every single person must take. I wrote an oath. 
about how you want to hunt in the natural but in the spirit. Okay, anything with a figure you don't hunt. Because figure can disappear any moment. <laughs> 